Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of our Partner Technical Video Series. Today, we have the pleasure to have Richard Clark from DXC Luxoft and Johan Stocking from The Things Industries to talk about how Morgan Sindel is partnering with The Things Industries, DXC Luxoft, and Microsoft to deliver data-driven LoRaWAN-based solutions to their facilities management customers. My name is Oscar Naim, and I am your host today and a Principal Program Manager in the Azure IoT Engineering Organization. Richard, could you please introduce yourself? Certainly. My name is Richard Clark. I'm a digital architect at DXC Luxoft. Our company provides system integration solutions across multiple different verticals, including automotive and retail. I'm part of the global Smart Places and Things team that provides IoT support to our clients, and which Morganson was one of them. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Now, Johan, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the Things Industries and what LoRaWAN is all about, particularly since Microsoft has just joined the LoRa Alliance. Thank you, Oscar. I'm really excited about that. So, uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Johan Stocking. I am a CTO and co-founder of the Things Industries. Uh, I'm also co-founder of the Things Network. More on that later. Um, and I co-founded the Things Network in 2015 when uh, Laura Wen was just released. And uh, yeah, my co-founder and I were immediately, immediately amazed by uh, its potential. And uh, we decided to build a business around it, but also a community initiative. So let me quickly explain what Laura and Laura Wen is uh, for people who are new to this technology. So here's a great overview of where Laura is positioned as compared to other wireless technologies that you might be familiar with. And we really see it as complementary, complementary to what is already out there. Um, LoRaWAN and LoRa and devices, they really focus on long range, low power and low bandwidth communications. So it's definitely not an IoT technology that's going to be suitable for all uh, IoT use cases, but certainly it opens up uh, a whole breed of new uh, IoT use cases that were not possible before. So LoRa, LoRa Wen and the LoRa Alliance, uh, that's an uh, industry alliance that governs the LoRa Wen standard and the certification program. So that combined this technology and the alliance and all the companies in the alliance um, that really uh, drives this unique combination of features that you see here listed. Uh, and you won't see this combination uh, in any other low power wide area networking technology uh, currently on the market. Uh, so that's really that's really exciting. Now, a typical uh, LoRaWAN network deployment uh, looks like this. Um, so this is a typical uh, topology. So you see the end nodes on the left, um, and these can be anything. So th these can be fridge uh, sensors, uh, parking sensors, desk presence sensors, cattle trackers, uh, anything, uh, because LoRaWAN is a generic messaging protocol. Uh, then you have the gateways and gateways to forward all traffic to a network server and a network server uh, manages the entire device fleet uh, including the end nodes and the gateways most developers building uh, solutions with LoRaWAN they interact with the LoRaWAN devices on the application layer through integration uh, to, through integrations and you see that on the right um, uh, where you see the application server so the Things Network is a developer community uh, and it's really focused on LoRaWAN. Um, the community has more than 150,000 members all over the world. And our community sets up gateways that can be used by other community members. Uh, and um, they use the network, the community network for all kinds of things. It can be research and development, but also um, many not-for-profit use cases. Uh, and that's, that is really nice. So this is really a, a free uh, open network um, for everyone who is interested in building LoRaWAN solutions. Besides that, and that's really what the Things Industries is, is, is really the commercial wing that uh, makes the Things Network sustainable and also uh, provides enterprise services and solutions around LoRaWAN. And here you see our core product, uh, the Things Stack. And the Things Stack implements all the LoRaWAN specifications. So it implements a network server, but also other components that are part of the LoRaWAN ecosystem. 
the thing stack is open core uh, and you can grab a free distribution and browse the source code on our GitHub repository. And this is also where you see the Azure IoT integration uh, position. So you see on the right, we have multiple integrations and they interact natively with the thing stack. Uh, and the Azure IoT integration is really advanced because it also features device provisioning, telemetry, uh, and all sorts of advanced monitoring features. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Johan. Now, let's talk about GoldenEye and how Morgan Sindel is leveraging this data platform to deliver value to its customers. So, Richard, uh, please tell us more about the problem we want to solve for Morgan Sindel and how GoldenEye is helping on this. Well, Morgan Sindel themselves are a company, they provide uh, property service management for various housing associations. Uh, in the UK, it's also to do with uh, county councils, uh, properties as well. They go in, install equipment, they sort out properties, um, put in uh, damp proofness, put in um, insulation and all sorts of features along those lines. But they had no ability to actually predict uh, where they would need to go. Also, they could offering this sort of service to their clients, where they can say, as a client, their clients, they're the landlords, which they are responsible for dampness and air quality and living standards for their tenants. So this is what the GoldenEye platform is about. It allows um, their clients and their tenants to monitor the environment they're living in to see if there is any dampness or um, mold or the temperatures were correct, um, heating's on and efficient or not overheating, heating's available to them. But one of the issues with this on low cost housing is also they didn't want to put sensors in that would use the local energy or electricity from the their tenant or even their own bandwidth. So we decided on the LoRaN network so we can have little sensors which will talk to gateways that are mounted on our external buildings and it are all battery operated so they don't use the energy from the, uh, the client. Excellent. So, yeah, excellent. So, so question to Richard. Uh, uh, so as the solution integrator, can you paint us a picture of the overall architecture and the technical components that comprise the solution. Yeah, I could certainly uh, cover most of the architecture around it. Th this slide really just shows the integration point uh, for uh, GoldenEye platform. Mm -hmm. We have um, specific uh, sensors. Um, we're using tectelic sensors for air quality. We're using uh, MCF 88 and uh, sensors from the MCF 88 people who are monitoring temperature. We also use their external um, sensors to actually ingest data. So we have to ingest the data into Azure. Azure was uh, selected by the client um, with our help in deciding it. We then route this data into logic apps for transformation and process because um, different sensors from different manufacturers, the payloads are always different. So we wanted a common set payload that's entered into the system stream. That's then pushed in through stream analytics for analysis of whether the temperature is reaching a threshold over multiple days, or we've got missing a heartbeat sensors because sometimes the sensors might be in a black hole area. So which we need um, idea where to go and actually get our engineers out on site to actually say the sensors needs replacing or repositioning. And also this um, telemetry is then analyzed, um, pushed out into the data warehouse, which are then the clients themselves can view through either a mobile app or through uh, a portal. And, and I, I remember, Richard, that, um, you know, your solution we will be evolving to leverage IoT Central as well, right? Oh, yeah. We are investigating IoT Central for ease of management, easier uh, manipulation of the modeling uh, within the IoT Central, also pushing that into Digital Twin eventually. Perfect. So, so Johan, this, this is a great opportunity to talk about DTI's integration with Azure IoT and Azure IoT Central. Uh, could you please tell us more? Yeah, so the Think Stack really has two integrations with Azure IoT, one for IoT Hub and the other for IoT Central. And customers can choose based on their requirements or what, what 
is the best fit for their existing architecture. So here is the IoT Hub integration, and the IoT Hub integration allows for a lot of flexibility for developers. So they can they really have um, low level access to the event stream. Now we have an Azure Resource Manager template to uh, deploy these resources, and you'll see that in a minute in the demo. Um, these resources and this whole uh, design is serverless. Um, so there's no compute deployed in your Azure account, and that makes it really scalable and at the same time, uh, very low cost, um, especially if you don't have a lot of traffic in the beginning. So devices are onboarded automatically as they transmit data to IoT Hub, and the device twin also gets updated automatically with all LoRaWAN metadata uh, that one can think of. We also have an integration with IoT Central. And the IoT Central integration is really the batteries included uh, variant. Uh, it's really plug and play. There's just one Azure resource deployed in the customer's account and it supports the Azure uh, device provisioning service for uh, natively onboarding uh, LoRaWAN devices securely and at scale. Um, and so, yeah, we made these Azure uh, resource manager templates uh, and it makes it really easy for customers to deploy them in their Azure account. Excellent. So uh, another question to Johan, uh, can you talk about how do we ensure security for all these sensors? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, and it's a really important topic as well. So LoRaWAN comes with mandatory security features. So you, you can't do LoRaWAN without using security features, but um, yeah, just like you shouldn't write your password uh, on a post-it, you, uh, you should still use the LoRaWAN security features in a secure way. Now, LoRaWAN comes at the heart of the protocol with authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality features. And here is a great overview of what that looks like. So you see in red, uh, the red uh, line is the LoRaWAN end-to-end -end encryption. So that's for confidentiality. That goes all the way from the end device to the application. In blue, uh, you see the authentication and integrity that is uh, maintained uh, between the end device and uh, the network server. And um, in blue, you see the standard um, security features that are provided by using uh, IP connected um, components. So gateways typically have uh, an ethernet or a 4G or 5G backhaul, and they are just connected securely to, uh, to, to a cloud service and uh, also between the network server, so the ThinkStack and uh, the application server. So that's typically uh, the um, IoT Hub or IoT Central integration. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, thank you, Johan. Now, um, let's see a demo of uh, the current solution that TTI, DXU Looksoft uh, have put together. So, Johan, uh, why don't you get started? So, this is the ThinkStack console, which is our web interface where you can manage gateways. So, these are covering your end devices. You can also go to your applications. Um, you can have multiple and in the applications, you can have your end devices or so your sensors that are transmitting data. So for the, for the demo, I can go here to our live data stream. And this is all the metadata uh, and all the details of all the traffic that the end devices are sending. So this is a lot of data. It's in JSON format, but you find here also the decoded payload, uh, but also a lot of other metadata um, that helps you uh, with uh, analyzing the coverage of your end devices. You can go to the integrations and here you'll find the Azure IoT Hub integration. Uh, and this is uh, really easy to get started with. So first you generate an API key. You can copy that to your clipboard and then you can go to our documentation which contains a deploy button that makes it really easy to deploy the uh, template in your Azure account. So this brings you straight to your Azure portal and uh, it shows you a form where you fill out uh, some details about the deployment. Uh, so select your resource group and enter the API key. Uh, and besides the API key, you just enter your application ID and a few other things. Um, and that's it. And then you can go ahead with the deployment. So this typically takes up to five minutes. Um, but when that is done, you can go to your resource group. 
And in your resource group, you see the, uh, the resources that have been deployed in your Azure account. Uh, so this is what I just showed in the, in the, on the slide. Now in VS Code, you can really easily connect to your IoT hub uh, that, is, that is now also deployed. And here you see the data stream. So these are the exact same JSON messages that I just showed in the ThinkStack console, um, but then on IoT hub. And this allows you as an Azure developer to work directly with the very same uh, payloads and metadata uh, as you are maybe already used to as a ThinkStack customer, or that you can take from here and build and use uh, as part of your application. So now back to you, Oscar, to see what you can actually do with this. Great. Let's switch now to Richard to talk about actionable data. OK, thank you. As you can see, uh, we've got uh, two uh, application groups. We've got one per manufacturer. We take uh, data ingested in from the uh, sensors, pass it on to uh, IoT Hub, which then uh, sends the telemetry or the event information off to a service bus queue. The service bus queue uh, then is triggered by, uh, within the Logic app. The Logic app will then processes to see if we need any new tags added to our device twin. Uh, if there was any failures, it will raise an, an alert. If the fail on next stage, it will then uh, analyze what type of message. We might have a time sync message, which we need to report back to the actual sensor, the current time, in which case we'll send um, update the, the desired properties within the device twin, and that then gets uh, synchronized back to the device with the new uh, things industries uh, integration. Once the telemetry is sent through, um, we'll get through the system. I'm now going to show you some of the uh, IoT events or IoT um, device twin itself. The, uh, as you can see here, we got a set of tags. The first set is supplied by the things industries. The rest are our own proprietary uh, tags. You can also see uh, the decoded payload that we actually see through the event. This is the standard message that we get from the things industries and included a device twin. And for this particular sensor, you can see there's actually two payloads per message. They are taken uh, 15 minutes apart. This is the actual event message we actually receive sent through uh, to the event hub from uh, the things industry. It's, it's got contains a lot more information around the metadata, around the uh, signal strengths uh, that you get from the gateway itself. Some examples of it. Um, we're now going to have a look at the actual, uh, how you would do the transform, how we transform the um, streams. We'll go into the Logic App Designer. We parse the message uh, coming in. We update the tags. We set some internal properties around initializing the battery uh, property. As you can see, we check for the time sync message itself. We send off the command. We use an Azure function to do this, which will then update the desired properties within the device twin itself. We've got two types of sensors that are coming into uh, this uh, stream uh, transform. The CO2 sensor and an external uh, weather sensor air quality. We update the uh, battery percentage on the CO2 sensor uh, from percentage to actual uh, millivolts. And we do, and split there the payload into two individual messages. As you can see, See on the uh, transform payload of the external sensors, only one message needed to be sent. We then write them to a storage account. That storage account helps with downstream processing, where uh, stream analytics will process it, etc. Here's an, ex uh, an existing uh, one that successfully uh, went through. As you can see, the payload has certainly changed. We also record the signal strength information so we can do analysis later on. 
Right. We're going to have a look at a more simpler one now, uh, where the transform payload only just needs minor changes. As you can see, we look at the um, actual results of it. You can see the structure of the payload we actually write down to the storage account uh, blob is virtually the same. It's just uh, odd changes, maybe new different parameters are in it. Now, here's a few examples of the transforms that we provide. Now, we actually, part of the process, we actually monitor any alerts from the system uh, and within a queue. And it, these are just uh, examples of the types of alerts we, we can actually retrieve from the system. Uh, that's it from this demo. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Now, why don't you talk about a bit uh, about some of the main reasons why you have chosen Azure and Azure IoT services for building this solution? Certainly. Uh, Morgan Sidney himself is already an existing Dynamics 365 customer, but we still had to show along the benefits of going through IoT Hub, uh, Event Hub, what uh, potentials of low code, no code patterns we could potentially use, what uh, useful serverless infrastructure um, that was wind uh, Azure itself. Uh, so they didn't have to worry about virtual machines and keeping them running 24-7 uh, for 365 days and all that sort of things. Also having to show them how to use different cost models to save on actual expenses within it. We also uh, showed them and use um, the serverless compute functions from Power Apps and Logic Apps. Excellent. Uh, now, Johan, uh, could you please comment on this as well? We'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah, sure. So we see many LoRaWAN solution developers struggling with uh, device provisioning, uh, telemetry, integrations, uh, routing data, storage. Um, and that's just the start, you know, it's just, just getting the data in the right place. Uh, and, and using Azure IoT really allows developers to focus on uh, spending their time on, on, on building added value to, you know, fix a problem for their customers. So the integrations that we built, uh, they bring LoRaWAN into the comfort zone uh, of the existing Azure customers, but as well as, you know, uh, customers that are using Dynamics or Office 365, like Morgan Sindel. And another reason to use Azure IoT is really to combine all sorts of IoT technology technologies because LoRaWAN is oftentimes just one piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. uh, and developers need a development platform and yeah, Azure IoT is just that. And we just provide one one puzzle piece basically. Yeah, exactly. Now, now Johan, what are some of your recommendations uh, that, that, that you have for solution builders out there? Yeah. so. Getting things working end-to-end uh, -end in a way that is scalable, secure, and future-proof, um, that is really one thing to focus on, I would say. And, and you know, a Hello World application for LoRaWAN really takes uh, quite some effort, and uh, it comes with many, many friction points. And many existing guides that help you uh, to build this Hello World application is, is something you can basically throw away after, after, you know, there's Hello World on your screen because it was never designed in a scalable and secure way. Um, but the integration here, and that is also what I would recommend, is, is to really start using building blocks that you can actually use when your application um, needs scale and needs security and uh, when it needs to become future-proof. And, you know, what you see here with the uh, demonstration of, uh, for the Borman Sindel use case is actually the very same technology that you can build for a simple Hello World test. And you can build that further and scale it out. Perfect. Now, uh, Richard and Johan, to close our conversation today, could you please tell us what calls to action do you have for our listeners? And let's start with Richard. All right, certainly. Um, if they're interested in the GoldenEye platform itself, we got uh, there is a major website out there already which will show you the benefits of actually using the GoldenEye platform, how to monitor housing and everything. But if you need help with integrations of various um, items into uh, different platforms, then you can certainly uh, contact us at um, luxoft.com. When there's uh, certainly in the smart places and things, and we can help with IoT integrations from different platforms. 
lower rank being the one that harm me once. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. Uh, let's hear from Johan now. Yeah, so the Azure IoT Hub integration that you saw and the central integration also are already available for all our customers and it's even free for uh, non-commercial use on a community network. So you can get started with that today. So yeah, you can go to our website, thethingsindustries.com. You can sign up for a free discovery tier. Um, you need you know, any LoRaWAN compliant hardware. It doesn't really matter which gateway and which end device, it will just work. And uh, yeah, you can follow the documentation and you know use this link to uh, deploy the integration in your Azure account. Excellent. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.